This is Warrior's Way, and we begin this edition in East London and the beautiful Buffalo Park ground, situated a big six feet from the beachfront. Warriors! The Warriors went into December on the crest of a wave as they found top form in the CSA T20 Challenge. Three wickets by Bashir Walters kept the lid on the Sunfoil Dolphins innings before a blazing 107 from just 58 balls by Captain John John Smuts and 55 from 26 balls by Colin Ingram carried the Warriors to a sensational victory as they chased down 216 with seven wickets and six balls in hand. This result kept them in second place on the log, two points behind the Titans. So there was good reason for the entire squad to join their captain in celebrating a fantastic win. A weather-affected loss to the tabletoppers meant a home playoff match with the Lions for a place in the final. Colin Ingram backed up a fine Warriors bowling performance with a classy 56 not out to steer the team into the final as they reached the target of 137 with 7 wickets and 10 balls to spare. It was a night to remember for coach Malibongwe Makete and the entire squad as well as the Warriors faithful who'd come to St George's Park in numbers to get behind the team, who in turn showed their gratitude for their support. The final took the Warriors to Centurion to face the Titans once more. And after a campaign that saw them win seven matches, there was a relaxed, confident vibe in the camp as they prepared for the big one. Great opportunity here for the boys. Awesome ground, awesome atmosphere. Hopefully the Buggers can bring it home for us. But sadly it wasn't to be as the Titans took a six-run victory. Yeah, I mean to make the final of, of um, a big tournament like, like the Pro 20, it, it's big for us, you know. We hadn't done it for, for a while and um, we take out a lot of positive from the experience. Um, last year we had near misses, we had a playoff. And uh, this year we've gone one step further, we've got into the final. And uh, yeah, it was disappointing to be to come second best. But the fact that we got there, we're playing good positive cricket uh, is quite encouraging for us. Yeah, I was happy with, um, with the way we, we went about on the field. Um, we still had opportunities to make sure that we don't chase 150 odd. Um, but yeah, like I said, um, the whole final and the way things went about, it's. Um, it was a great learning curve for us. We know that as well as we bowled, we could have bowled better. We could have taken our opportunities. Um, in saying that, I'm so proud of the boys and the way they've carried themselves and the way they've went about their business in the whole competition. The narrow six-run loss at Centurion typified the cohesive fighting spirit that characterised the Warriors' approach all through their CSA T20 campaign. We focused on a few small things that, that uh, essentially bring us, bring us together. We, we focused on on looking after each other, we focused on just a little, the, the small things that we do off the field to, 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 um, to carry us through on the field and it's been a, it's an amazing growth um, for, for, for the last, last three, three, three years. Yeah, we're looking forward to the change of competition. Um, you know, we, it's important for us to make sure we start a game. Uh, that will be helped by having a different captain who will bring in fresh energy. Also different guys will come in for this competition. And uh, we want to make sure that uh, we get over the Pro 20 quickly and, um, and put our best foot forward for the first game up in Durban. It's no secret that on-field success leads to a bigger fan base. And the Warriors' fine form has led to bustling grass banks and stands at St George's and Buffalo Park. After each home game, the squad were only too happy to come down to the boundary's edge and get up close and personal and sign autographs for their supporters as a way of thanking them for their loyalty. I think the Warriors really did well. I think they deserved this win tonight. Yeah, it was a great game and they really deserved it. Bashir Walters, I like his consistency in bowling. Uh, John John Smuts. And why? Mm, he probably has the best performance over all year, over the whole tournament for the Warriors. Oh, just great atmosphere here, yeah. um, couldn't be happier. A great crowd coming here as our 12th man, so very excited. Oh, there's a bit of extra buzz tonight, which is great. We always have a, a really diehard fans, so it's, uh, it's great to have a good buzz around and you know, off to a win. And uh, yeah, we really appreciate them, you know, we, uh, we always have great crowds here yeah, and sort of see them as our sort of 12th man, so it's nice to just interact with them tonight. Mm -hmm. 
The successful campaign and the CSA T20 challenge was built on a foundation of meticulous planning and strategizing in order to get the maximum out of every member of the Warriors squad. There was a lot of planning and, and, and discussion in terms of how the squad composition should be. And um, we know with the, most of the wickets we played on, we needed to make sure that we've got good spinners in the middle period, which we went for two good spinners and Colin coming in doing a third spinner role. The individual roles within the team were quite clear and guys knew exactly what was expected of them. And um, that's what helped us to achieve what we have achieved to get in the final. We know that we've got the best squad in terms of fitness and um, many of them have missed a lot injuries through muscular fitness or anything like that. So in terms of conditioning, we, we're up there with the best in the country, which is a credit must go to Drickers on, on making sure that our pre-season is, is proper and the guys get the service that they need throughout the season, not only in the pre-season. It's a professional job, fully, fully around, so your nutrition becomes very vital, conditioning crucial, um, rest just as important as the conditioning, and clever ways to box around your, your year, seasons now. It took, uh, took some time to get it, to get it here, but having a, a, a facility like this, this is basically just a conditioning facility, starting to lean towards that, that functional facility that I, I really want at the end of the day. But um, yeah, if you swing around a sledgehammer in a, in a Virgin Active or a Planet Fitness, a, a health club, people tend to frown, frown upon that, that type of movements. And if you're looking at, at conditioning and functional training, that's, that's necessities to, to what's the requirements of today's preparation. Well, I'm just looking for um, functional movements. What they've been doing is activation sessions, which is basically just going through their functional movements and full ranges. Now we've been doing that before every T20 game this far and that's something I would like them to do on their own basis moving forward because um, that's how they become professional, players looking after themselves. Now that will, the movement sequence would be like a Bulgarian squat or one leg squat, a 747 pull up, um, all of press, those type of movements, finished by uh, explosive jumps. And it's just to get the functional movements coordinated and then from there move into the game. A vitally important facet of professional cricket is nurturing the next generation of players. And through the Loxian cultural development sessions, in which professional players share their experiences with talented and eager aspiring stars, EP Cricket is building a strong future for the Warriors. Look, I think, I think the vision started out with the sharing of life and also cricket, uh, the kids that come from similar background to the professionals. And, and it's really taken off in terms of that, bringing the, the players, the young players closer to the professionals. Uh, it's been successful where we've had these professionals come in and to share their practical cricket knowledge and experience with the young cricketers, but also life. You know, some of the challenges that they went through as professionals and how these young players can overcome those challenges and, and reach heights like the professional cricketers have done. It's critical that we make sure as these players that have been coming to these events have been players from the high performance program that are being coached at the hubs and the RPCs and the townships. And so this will feed directly into our uh, provincial teams and then senior provincial, the academy, and then ultimately into the Warriors. You know, we have to widen the base and make sure we upskill, we mentor, and we coach these kids so when they ultimately get into the Warriors that they are fully equipped for the challenges of professional life and professional cricket. I'll be happy if we can see a real development around some future stars coming from this program, but also future leaders. I think leadership is key. We need people in cricket, not just to play cricket, but also administrators to, to take this game to new heights. And so from the townships, we need these kids to be given opportunities, but also to take these opportunities and be accountable for the opportunities given. St George's Park is the oldest international cricket ground in the country, having hosted the first test match 127 years ago when England beat South Africa by eight wickets. 
St George's has been an integral part of cricket-loving families for many generations and continues to be so. It is very special. I mean, this is the ground where the first test match was ever played. Um, I spent many a day here with my, my dad, my late dad years ago, uh, watching Eastern Province and South Africa break cricket. So it's a very special ground for me now. Um, I've seen great players play cricket here. I've seen players uh, the calibre of Grant and Peter Pollock and they were idols of mine when I was growing up and, and that's part of what makes this ground very special for me is watching those great players play here. The 27th and most recent test match at Port Elizabeth's venerable ground saw Sri Lanka play at St George's for the first time over the festive season as they took on the Proteas. Well first of all I'm an Eastern Cape boy so cricket is synonymous with the Eastern Cape. Played it at school, played it on the ground watching my dad playing cricket and then I grew up in a small country uh, farming area where cricket was almost like a religion. Played cricket for many, many years. You know, my kids grew up on the side of the cricket field. Love cricket. I think cricket's an amazing sport. The stadium is the oldest stadium in South Africa. It's an iconic stadium. We as a municipality know that we need to make sure that this place is up to standard, that we can host international matches and maybe one day even a day-night match, but we need to get the lights right and we need to get a lot of other things right. We're a medium-sized city, so it's accessible to everybody. Uh, it's a beautiful city, it's in the centre of town, beautifully uh, surrounded by an historic park. And cricket lovers, people who understand cricket, I think that's what makes this place a really good place to watch cricket. People know what they're talking about and love cricket. Of that there is little doubt, and the ground was pulsing with vibe and atmosphere during the five days of the Test match that makes watching cricket at St George's Park so special. Um, St George's Park is, is famous for their, their, love, their lively band. Um, everybody loves, loves coming, coming to play just for the band. But um, the hospitality at St George's is, is, is amazing. Um, most teams, when, when they leave here, they leave really, really happy. So um, for all, all around, good, good crowd to come play at. That's all from this edition of Warriors Way. Thanks for the support. Until next time, take care and cheers.